All right, welcome. This is the first video I'm cutting this year and we'll be using a lot of what was last year and you'll see every now and then 2000 AutoCAD, AutoCAD 2009, 2010, you'll see some 2011 and it shouldn't worry you, this software changes somewhat, but from year to year, basically they're just adding new and different ways to do things, adding some functionality. Um, the latest thing is point clouds for those of you who get involved in some scanning so but we also need to learn to change what we're doing sometimes and try to get ourselves in the brain space of aligning with other software so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to introduce you to this concept of a tool that somehow from years ago I was not trained to do that well and that's that magic match this match property thing so how we're going to do that this year is on our standard template, which we'll talk about later, I'm going to have some lines. So that line there you see is something called, it's in a layer, drafted that, hitting escape bar here. My keyboard a year later still doesn't work. I'll turn my keyboard off, turn it on. I draft on an iMac. It's kind of a couple, three years old. It's not the really cool, nice ones at home running Windows Vista. So. Um, and a repetitive theme would be with this thing, clicking on this. It doesn't seem to want to find the wireless keyboard in the morning. So there it is. All right. So if you remember, you'll soon, soon learn, but right click. I'm going to use right click a lot. Shift right click. I'm going to use right click a lot. But I'm also going to learn O for offset, T for through. I'm going to offset that line through, that line through, that line through. That line through. So now I got one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five lines that are parallel. And we'll see later how we test. They seem to be the same type of line. Looking at them, we have no idea how big they are. So one of the first things you're going to learn to do in any kind of drafting is going to draft or draw a box slightly bigger than the thing you want to draft. There's going to be other ways to do this, but that's just the best habit. So I'm now I'm just going to show you a command list. Click on that. That is around 12 long. So I'm going to draft a box with a line here, another shift from last year. I'm going to take that here. I'm going to draft that 20 long. And I'm going to offset it 20 units. I want to zoom out here. You see that is there. So that's a drafting a box. I'll go now. Go a line. I'm going to hold a shift right click from the endpoint. Shift right click from the endpoint, and you notice this thing jumping around. If you look down at the bottom here, we want to draft with all of our little snaps off, except for maybe quick properties. I'm going to do that again. This time I'm going to O offset T for through. Click that and then hit shift right click end point I'm just showing you the kind of discussion and speaking that I'll do as I'm going through here so now I've got something that's actually bigger than the thing I'm going to draft and I have a bunch of lines are the same well instead of that I'm going to go learn to this semester like a lot of programs learn to click on something and then right click and change the properties I'm going to change the property to a different layer, this is called. You can't see this. So I'm going to go through this process right now and change one to layer hidden. All right, so the second one there is on layer hidden. And the third one there is going to be on layer object, which you see got screwed up again from last year. I'm going to click back to here, and I'm going to make sure that nothing is turned off. Now all this stuff you're seeing there, you shouldn't worry too much about it. I'm going to click on something and learn to hit E for erase. What I want to show you is just this tool here. That right now my current layer is center line and if I draft a line or a circle from one of our choices here, they're going to be on that layer. There's going to be lots of easy ways to go ahead and change what is your current layer, but it's going to be really easy to use this match prop. And it's going to be a tool that we develop really early, even before we understand how we do it. We'll be drafting with layers going out of the box this year. In other words, starting right away, 
We're going to have you differentiate things on your drafting plane, just like I will have you differentiate things on your paper plane using different colors or symbols. So, match. Changes the layer of a selected object to match the destination layer. Hmm. Sometimes you learn to do this in AutoCAD. Ah, uh, changes the layer. Okay, I'm going to change that. Okay, I'm going to hit Escape, Escape, Escape. I'm going to grab that. And it says, select objects to be changed. And what I'm pointing you out here is to the command window. And this is where all your questions are. There's a great debate amongst we who teach civil or, or teach AutoCAD whether or not this kind of um, command window is something we'll keep around. And it's a great fun debate. I'll let you know, however, if it is a question of screen space, you just get another screen. But it is something that in many programs you kind of always have an ability to pop that up so you can see what's going on. Now it might not be that way for my daughter, but for me I like to see the script so that later on I can learn to program and write scripts, which is becoming making a, make a big, big comeback now with all this stuff you're seeing with Google phones and everything else. Okay, so select objects to be changed. I'm going to change that. And I'm going to change that. Hit a space bar. Spacebar tells you it's done selecting the objects to be changed, and then it asks for the select object on destination layer. And so I click on that, and it changes them to that layer. Show you another one. Remember, my current layer is still center line, so what I do is I go to that, I grab what I want to change, spacebar, go to the layer I want to change it to, and you see things are changed. So that is the introduction. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to keep going for 15 minutes. Um, and the 15 minutes is to expose you all to the new limit in um, YouTube. YouTube, for the longest time, if you were not a partner, you got 10 minutes. But they gave you a little bit more than 10. You went to 11, 12. You get to 11, they wouldn't not take your video. Nowadays, they're pretty strict on the 15, and they're pretty strict on you not being able to pull off movies and put like game shows on there, so they say, um, in this idea of keeping intellectual property um, from being completely losing its value by having everything on YouTube. All right, so what I've introduced you to is the command. You're going to notice there, as I show you the highlight there over the ribbon that's called across the top, the command is L-A-Y-M-C-H. As you start to learn some of these commands, you're going to learn that you can type them, L-A-Y-M-C-H. And that will get you the same command. All right. Now you'll see there's going to be lots of different ways people like to draft. Personally, you'll see in my class, you're not precluded from it. But I don't use the ribbon a whole lot. And I'll explain why here. The ribbon is going to be used for a lot of these add-on programs. And so it's going to be context-driven that when I change something, very often the ribbon there is going to change. So I'm going to hit a cancel there. All right. Now, so I'm going to draft a lot like that, but I'm going to use a lot of toolbars. And one of the things you're going to learn is going to be on an exam that we'll have. And it'll be some questions that you'll be able to take over and over again over the semester. But right-click on any toolbar will give you a list of all the toolbars. So if I right-click, and basically it's I like the right click on the kind of end of the gray space. Right click on any toolbar, I can bring up the lights toolbar, whatever that is. Now very often you have no idea where it came because it came into some, some odd spot. But if I again right click on a toolbar, bring up the draw order toolbar. And you see the draw order toolbar came over here on the right. So sometimes you don't know where they go. The lights one, I don't see. Okay, so this is the idea of right click on any toolbar brings up another set of toolbars. But what happens when all your toolbars are gone? I'm going to introduce you here to the minus in front of a lot of commands. Minus tool bar gets you what's called basically just a text input. It's called the non-verbose system. So you don't get a dynamic dialog box. You don't get things popping up. But it's, again, very useful. Anytime you learn a command, I'm going to suggest you try to learn to type it in with minus and see if it takes it. So one thing you never want to put here is all. We're going to say perhaps draw, and we're just going to say show. And it brings up the draw toolbar on the left. We're going to right-click on any toolbar. 
bring up the modify toolbar on the right. And if you notice here, this toolbar here, as you go over the top of it, it should tell you that's the layers toolbar. You go over the top of that, it should tell you it's the view toolbar. You've got all kinds of different things up here, but you'll start to learn how the interface works. And there's a lot to settings in this program. And so we're going to really work at using our workspace, something you'll see down here, using our workspace. Uh, there's one there. Um, so we can keep in the short term on a consistent basis from machine to machine, person to person. Colors will be standardized for a while, line types, but we will be drafting very, very early with layers. Not so much that I'm going to be grading on it to start, that would be later. It's so that you can learn that colors influence how your brain sees things. And so you want to start to pick colors and layers, specifically colors, that your brain processes as being important or not. Uh, and red, yellow, green, there's all kinds of different, I, I think you'll see the green laser. Uh, we see best green. Uh, and so very often you see a lot of uh, green lasers. And so I, I've been using green, and there's a lot of standards that use green for a good heavy line on the paper. So when you're, you want to realize here that on the drafting screen, these colors are not going to be what gets plotted out typically. Sometimes, you know, you can do it that way, but for the most part, we're still producing engineering drawings that are going to be black and white or shades of gray. Um, that's changing as the cost of color copying goes down, but we're going to be using colors and to, to, to denote in our brains what is heavier or not heavy. We'll be learning to play around with line weights. I'm going to turn on the line weight there now. That's a switch on and off. Um, to see lines get thicker or not. But as I use this course many, many ways, uh, but one of them, one of the most prominent ones for me is to get everybody in tune with the fact that when you are drafting by hand or drafting in a computer, you're doing some pretty complex, intense mathematical solutions. And that's not to say that math is the be-all, end-all, but it really is something that can make systems more efficient, especially as we get to this ubiquity of computing in our cell phones and our um, smartphones and our computers and our cars and our toasters and our refrigerators. This concept that there is some computation going on when you're drafting is something I want you all to see. All right, so that's 15 minutes because I'm going to get two more minutes here. I'm going to ask you in class not to watch this whole thing, but I'm going to kind of zoom around here a little bit, zoom in and out. Just you're going to see the response as I'm going back and forth. I'm moving my middle mouse, moving my middle mouse. I'm holding a right click. When you do right click and I'm hitting a right click and I'm not getting much. When you do a right click, you get something else. But when you do a shift, I'm holding the shift. I'm holding it down and right clicking. You'll get something what's called a set of object snaps. And the prime difference between uh, the, the, the drafting instructors in equal, equally good ways, uh, some of it's based in what we see going forward, backward, how long we're working, how old we are, um, how resistant we are to, or, you know, to our own way of thinking or perhaps to other ways of thinking. We, you all would develop particular styles. So those of you in my class for the short term, I'm going to really require... Um, that you do not turn on the dynamic here, and you'll see, and I'll discuss why in a couple of videos. But the dynamic, all of a sudden, you get floating around what we call the flea. That's the flea. We don't want you to use that. I don't want you to use that. You're going to have all of these things off, perhaps quick properties even off. And I'm going to go right-click here. I'm sorry. I'm clicking on there. And I'm going to go use icons. I don't want it to look like that either. That means nothing to me. I'm going to right click over the top and turn off the icons. So, so we can read snap, grid, ortho, polar, o snap, o track, dukes, dine, wit, and QP. Running out of time. Thanks for listening. Welcome to class. Download AutoCAD if you can. Definitely download SketchUp. Thanks for listening.